security camera caught this little thief. Luckily, I know the tried and true method. There! And now we wait. Nah, nuts to this. Let's go with another classic. Easy does it. There, now we wait. Sweet tech savory! Hey! Oh, wrench. What is this, Team Team? So how's a blade gonna let us travel to other worlds? Well, see, a Keyblade Wilder can... Xehanort, Castle Oblivion, <laughs> Ailey Joel Osmond... Now let's see what Treasure Planet has in store! Sleep for days and days. Probably three hundred fifty days. Seems lawyer magic is stronger than a blade key. You really flew there. I guess we found out how far he'll go. <laughs> Farts are funny. No, they aren't. Even though others my age may find farts funny, an adult of a few children's shows told me that they are low-brow form of humor that is the last resort of a show devoid of creative. <laughs> That's it! Yeah. Farts clocks. <laughs> Fart bomb! Fart cannon! <laughs> Pardon me! Old man dog farts. Fart war is hell. A llama? What's that doing here? Remember that Carl fiasco? I'm still carrying scars. Nonsense, old timer. This is a loot llama, a special piñata that holds untold treasures. Untold treasures? My boy, you mustn't temper with this. Hey! There are things in this world that men and tunes are not meant to disturb. Give that back! No! I'm hiding it where no one can find it. Sorry, Conroy, but I'm doing this for your own good. Dead blasted! Open up my thing! Come on, baby! Daddy needs a new pair of boom! <laughs> the thing about online games is, you gotta know your surroundings. I agree. Now let's see what's in this thing. A sticker? Oh man. With this infinity gauntlet and with all six infinity stones, I now have the power to wipe out half of the universe. But that would be very dumb and dangerous, so I'll just take this off and... Hey, Conroy! Come and listen to some good music! Oh, uh, yeah, Daddy-o! Hey, that does have a nice beat. Uh-oh. Ah, it's just like my dream! Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Whoops. Hey, Conroy. I don't feel so good. I don't know, doggy. You look all right to me. I'm in trouble, aren't I? Boy, you don't know the half of it. Ah, 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 violence. Ah, ow, sounds of pain. Ah. Oh, it's this show. Let's see how it is. Time for another review. Quit 
full of fudge. Toons these days. This is the next SpongeBob. All I see is Charlie Brown butting heads with his sisters, Bossy Ditsy, Rocky Happy, Moody Dopey, Girly Nerdy, and Yucky. I think he talks to the camera like Saved by the Bell to teach me uh, some moral about how to live with a hyperactive family or, or, or birth control or hoo-ha, but my ears were ringing too much to hear it. <gasps> this show may be fine for older kids, but it's not for parents. If this is what it takes to raise puppies, then it's the bachelor life for me, baby! So it was brought to my attention that Ben 10 got itself another season. Except this time around, Ben split up with his pals Gwen Stacy and Alice Cooper and joined forces with the Avatar alien cat version of every single rebellion cop partner ever. One thing that ain't changed about this show, though, plenty of alien bad guy butt kicking and plenty of things that look like they came from the costume bargain bin. Seriously, what is with the watches doing all manner of technical hoodoo except for telling time? When did transmogrifying watches suddenly became the end thing? And how does this show keep getting another season? <laughs> so, uh, did I avoid the warranty? Doggy's Gravity Fall review from last season was so popular, I decided I want to do one too. So first off, I don't agree with Doggy at all. I think this is the best cartoon that came out in 2012. I was skeptical at first because it didn't look like much, but by the third episode, the one with the wax figures, I was hooked. This show is fantastic. It's a really funny show with gags you wouldn't expect from a Disney cartoon and filled with mystery and suspense. Let's talk about what's good. First, I like the whole big story arc concerning the mystery about the town. A lot of spooky stuff occurs, and I hope we learn more about the author of the three books. I think it's Old Man McGucket, whose mind got messed up by Bill Cipher. Man, Bill Cipher was so cool. I hope we see more of him, especially since he's tied to something big that's connected to a lot of the characters. Now, the show isn't flawless. Though a lot of the episodes are entertaining, I hope next season will focus more on a story arc and less on standalone adventures, since that's the most exciting element of the show. Also, I hope Seuss's stupidity will be toned down, as well as Dipper constantly pining <laughs> for Wendy. Though fun at times, it leads the characters to do stupid and selfish things that put their lives and others at risk. All in all, I love this show and I can't wait to see where it leads, as it left on a great cliffhanger. Will we explore new worlds next season? I'm going to tune in and find out. Great. Remember that episode where I was in prison? Yeah, they caught me. So while I'm on death row, I managed to catch this show about some kid named Chris Thorndike who goes on adventures with his talking animal friends. It wasn't until later that I found out the show is called Sonic X, meaning this Chris kid ain't the main character. I don't know why he gets so much screen time. He's a whiny little pant load of a kid who acts like his life is hell because his folks ain't there for him. Except he's rich, still has a grandpa and servants who spend time with him, and as we later see, his parents make time for him. Yeah, real tough life. Wish my life could be so hard. So Chris teams up with Sonic, a Speedy Gonzales ripoff, and they go looking for Dragon Ball-like MacGuffins. And accompanying them is Sonic's best buddy, Tails, idiot rival Knuckles, who's meant to be an echidna, but I don't see it. His stalker, Amy, and her brainless sidekick, Cream, with her brainless sidekick, Cheese. Yeesh, the puns! Anyway, they're all trapped on Earth, along with the evil Dr. Eggman, who's about as lame as his name suggests. Wasn't he called Dr. Robotnik one time? Eh, whatever. I guess overall the show could be better if Sonic actually did stuff instead of lounging all day and Chris wasn't shoehorned in. I gotta wonder why they didn't just call this train wreck the Amazing Adventures of Chris and just be done with it already, because it sure as hell ain't about the hedgehog. Well, here we go again with a disgruntled review about a waste of celluloid. And what's more of a waste of celluloid than Johnny Test? A stupid show about some pretty kid and his stupid dog and his relatives going on adventures together. Not to be confused with Johnny Quest. Another stupid show about some pretty kid and his stupid dog going on adventures with his relatives. Allow me to sum up the show in one sentence. 
There's this bratty dweeb named Johnny Test who lives with his dorky sisters, mom, dad, and talking dog, and who gives a rip, Phil, where the dorky sisters built a lab in the attic, and Johnny always breaks in and messes around with the inventions. Gee, that doesn't sound familiar. And there's this evil little troll named Bling Bling Boy who has a crush on dorky sister number two who isn't interested in the slightest because she's got the hots for neighborhood hung gill and somehow Area 51 and the government are involved with them somehow. I don't know. I couldn't keep track. Hey. But no matter what over-the-top scenario comes to way, Johnny and his stupid dog always manage to outsmart it. Why? Because they're totally cool dudes. I am so sick of cartoons revolving around totally cool dudes. They aren't funny. Hey, man, we gotta go skateboard. Not right now, man. I gotta finish this pizza. Yo, I learned this rockin' tune on my Ibanez. Let's use words like wicked and radical like they haven't been out of style for 20 years. <laughs> ah! In other words, this particular cartoon is not suitable for my palate. Ah! You know, I think that was a little more than one sentence.